everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. I am Lucy Cave, Chief Content Officer at Bauer Media, and it is my pleasure to introduce to you the hosts of the Absolute Radio Breakfast Show, Dave Berry and Matt Dyson. Hi, gents. Hello. Hello, Lucy. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Now, before we delve into my questions, I have several. I just need to talk to something, talk about something very important. A recent moment of Radio Joy where Matt was crowned number two in Heat's Secret Crush. <laughs> yeah. So what a moment. Question, quick question. Is your ego too big for this conversation? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you might have to speak to my people about it. You know, I, it, won't, it won't change me, Lucy. I've, I've said from the start, it won't change me. And that's actually what I'm going to call the tour of my uh, Jumping Jacks <laughs> nightclubs, uh, personal appearance tour coming to a seaside town near you soon. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so you're at home now, which is, that's where you're broadcasting from at the moment, is it? You can't go into the studio. No, we are. We have been at home for I don't know how long has it been, Matt. How long have we been at well, home? Well, I mean, on and off. Years, we went back it? in for a little bit, uh, but on yeah. and off, yeah, almost a year, pretty much. I mean, ab the bosses are absolutely very good about it when it first kicked off, and and uh, I was the first to have to work from home because my wife Katie was showing symptoms. So yeah. they were very good at. We just you just get this special microphone, uh, and then you can plug it into your laptop, and we could work from home. And it was actually all right. It was quite good. I mean, I don't want to get too radio geek but the clean feed that we used to use it on sometimes when you'd get callers on there they sounded better than when you'd have an actual caller on a phone line in the studio it was it sounded like isdn quality uh dave you know what i'm talking about you I, 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 you know i have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> you're just doing this to show off and make me look stupid <laughs> but no being at home do you feel like it's made you kind of more um connected to the listeners i think most definitely in a way where most people are in the same boat i think that that's that's fair to say and i think you know if people are listening from their homesteads there's something that it does give you a deeper connection if what they're hearing is coming from the show's homestead as well um so I think it has also I think that there's been a deeper connection made uh, just purely because I think people have been looking for 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 some escapism I think they've been looking for a good time they've been looking for some a happy place uh, and understandably so because it's just been it's been rotten hasn't it yeah so um being able to you know provide that in some small way and then um you know as a consequence of that having some of the correspondence that not only the, the breakfast show but you know the station has had as a whole and i'm sure other radio stations have had too it's been a special time to to, to do this job because you know a lot of people have just been um grateful for you kind of being there in our case for them in the morning and as we say you know we are your friends on the radio and and, and the people out there have become you know our, our friends too uh, transcending just the kind of relationship that i suppose you would normally have between you know radio presenter and, and listener but forced upon us all due to terrible circumstances yeah it felt it felt better us being at home i think because everyone else was working yeah. from home so with us it was like we were in the same boat as as most of the listeners i mean a lot of people were carried on working all the way through and uh, their lives didn't change but a lot of people were working from home their whole circumstances their daily routine had changed so I felt, it felt right that we were in that boat with them really have you had any challenges like any um you know kids walking in when mm. they walk in you... yeah well i think you could get away with that for the first month of broadcasting <laughs> from home there was like oh isn't it funny that one of my children's come bounding in oh hilarious and it was all great and everyone loved it but then about two or three months in we were like okay we can't have any interruptions anymore the novelty's worn off we have to maintain some professionalism Shut them under the stairs then, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah lock them. Harry in the Potter attic, them, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, Matt, I, I totally agree with Matt. I mean, the novelty of seeing inside politicians and sports broadcasters and other presenters' houses and having their spouses and children walk in quickly wore off for me within the first few weeks of lockdown. Now, let's talk a little bit about the, the bond between um, presenters and listeners because people really talk about that as a as something that radio has that no other medium can can kind of achieve in the same way. Why do you think that is? I think a big part of it is to do with the immediacy of radio. Um, I mean, I know obviously lots of shows all around the world do it, but um, it is really rather wonderful to have a, an idea pop into your head and be able to execute that idea and have, 
you know, 2.3 million people or whatever want to engage with it and have their own take on things. And, and, I, and I, I sincerely do not mean it as a cheesy line, even though that's exactly what it is. But I do say regularly that we can't make the show without you. And that, that is a truism because, you know, if, if, if you take a look at the kind of what we put together each morning, it is really just a skeleton. And I don't like to hear any of the team's stories. They get given a little steer on what we might talk about. But then the listeners just are, are fantastic. And we've had so many great moments and even things where it's just been a, a passing thought from myself or, or somebody else on the team. And then you, you kind of see the text come in and one of those people becomes a phone call. And then all of a sudden you've got this great listener on just bringing joy to me and to the whole team and to everybody listening. So I think the immediacy, the fact that you can have that contact, which, you know, as a TV presenter and I've done lots of live TV, that doesn't really exist. There's there's forms of it where viewers have got in touch and here's what they've got to say. And it's on a cue card, but it's not bang right away. And I think that when, when, you, bu when you build up that kind of, um relationship with somebody um over a period of years when something like covid19 happens or when uh something bad happens that affects everybody's life that's where uh you kind of take on a bit of a different role for for one another and and that kind of trust has already been built and so uh fortunately for us it made it easier for us to kind of go forward and and have faith in in what we were doing and that we were kind of hitting the right notes and we were presenting it in in the right tone um because we we already had a, a good relationship with our listeners from just kind of messing about early in the morning yeah I mean, you talk about um, the sort of the tone and the, the fact that everything had changed for people. Because so I just want to go on to the sort of more serious side as well, because you, there's been such tough times. How mm. do you feel quite a responsibility um, to try and support the audience? And how have you done that? Uh, well, I think kind of across Absolute Radio, I think Time to Listen was a big thing. Um, each and every one of the, the presenters and hosts were asked to share um, stories about the songs that they find comfort in, that they turn to in good times and bad times. Uh, I think that um, our colleagues are over at, um, on the Home Time Show, Bush and Rich, they did a lovely thing where they kind of had a, a kind of basically a big cup of tea with everybody and, and and call people around who would you know go on to zoom and there'd be some some company and some people to talk to uh we occasionally have kind of big stop down moments really they're, they're big gear changes on the show but if uh it you know becomes apparent to you know whether it be producer mark or or, or the big boss man himself paul or, or or me and i feel it's time maybe there's been something in the news or we're heading into another lockdown that it's just time to let everybody know it's okay not to be okay then i think that it would be uh churlish of us not to use the platform that we've got and the relationship that we've got with the listeners as i said based on fun stuff and stories from everybody's lives to to use it just to kind of go we're all in this together if you're not feeling okay that's perfectly okay there's a whole host of places that can help you they're on our website go check them out and just to just to put that in there every every now and again because we can't really paper over the covid cracks and just keep asking people to hand in the cool badge or offer us their apologies, corrections, clarifications or or do you know a, a showbiz guest on, on on or whatever every now and again things whether you want to or not have to get real lucy and, and i think that um as a station as a whole and uh, we've been really good at that and i'm really proud of my my colleagues absolute radio they've done they've done some really good things as far as the listeners have been concerned and, and the listeners have given us exactly the same back you know letting us know that, that that they weren't okay but maybe this has made them feel a little better being open about talking about what a tough year they've had for so many different reasons it's been um it's been one hell of a year it really has it has. I mean, there's been a surge in streaming, though, hasn't there, for people mm. listening at home. Can you talk to me about that? Like, how? what are the figures like? Did that surprise you? The, the way people are listening to radio has changed because, like, they're, um, they're not doing their morning commute anymore. They're yeah. not in the car every morning, sat there tuning in in traffic. So it, it's all changed, really. And a lot of people are now listening via their smart speakers. Uh, Dave, have you, I believe you have the stats for exactly how many people. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're like, uh, don't ask. Uh, <laughs> you're like, put him on the spot there. I know he loves that. It's here, he is. I, I wrote them down because I knew you'd ask. 41% up on digital devices is listening, 26% on smart speakers, and another percentage that I was too lazy to write down said they continue to do exactly the same even after lockdown. They're the stats. Back to you in the studio, Lucy Kay. <laughs> <laughs> but well it done. is incredible. But like you say, it is, it's just a different kind of 
ebb and flow of how they are listening and what they're doing at the time. Mm. But you've got more people that are there and that have tuned into radio than ever before. Yeah, there's still, still a captive audience that need to escape from the kids running around in the house. Uh, so it's, in many ways, it's more important than ever. If you're locked down on your own, and that old cliche that radio is like a friend to you, which does sound very cheesy, but it's, it's been more true than ever uh, for people living on their own during lockdown. We are like one voice they hear every day. So that's the, it's a, a great honour to be, to be doing that, but it's also more important than ever for the listener. Yeah. Um, now, final question. How do you go about filling a show each day when there is not very much to talk about? Because, I mean, I don't know about you, but when I'm having conversations with my friends, they're literally, they're, they're, there's nothing that you've been, nothing yeah. new that you've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's one of the things, I said this very early on into lockdown one, but I was like sat at the dining table uh, with my family and uh, I kind of turned around to get something off the table and I knocked, I knocked my drink over and I thought, is there a link in that? <laughs> is that funny? Yeah. <laughs> Can I stretch that out to four and a half minutes? Yes, we're going <laughs> yeah, to have The answer was absolutely <laughs> I could. Yeah, um, yeah. you've yeah. got to go down it's right down dry. into the... It's been dry min- at times, Luce, yeah. The minutiae, <laughs> the very small things. But, you know, when you're at home with yeah. your partner or your other half, you know, yeah. they do things to annoy you. So that we've always got content for the uh, yeah. the, role, the relationship roller decks and stuff like yeah. that. There's, all, there's yeah. loads of stuff going on in the outside. On the, on the uh, social ammo desk, That's I've true. very much enjoyed compiling a list from social media of the co-idiots, the, uh, the pandemaniacs out there, the conspiracy theorists, <laughs> musicians. We're putting together a festival lineup with, like, right said. <laughs> Fred, the guy from the cause, Ian, uh, Brown. Ian Brown, Ian Brown headlining, of course, it's going to be an yeah. amazing festival uh, <laughs> when mass, there's no masks one. allowed. Brilliant. Thank you very much, gents. I would like. Thanks, well, Lucy. Say, I'd love you to both stand up and then reveal that you've got nothing underneath, but I won't. Uh, <laughs> but, um, thank Don't you. Don't tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be tuning in tomorrow as always. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks, Lucy. Cheers, Lucy. Bye. Bye. Bye.